One of the biggest opportunities set to transform life in the 21st century and beyond is the advent of a next generation, a new generation of quantum technologies. So these are technologies that seek to exploit untapped effects of quantum mechanics for our advantage. Governments and industries across the world are forecasting multi-billion economic and vast societal impact for a range of next generation quantum technology. While research in this area is really exciting and very often makes the headlines, it is clear that much fundamental research in this area is still needed in order to realize the full potential. In particular, we need to find the materials that will provide us with platforms, scalable platforms to uncover, explore, and exploit the quantum mechanical effects that we want to use in these next generation technologies. And this is where the area of quantum materials research plays a critical underpinning role. Ultimately, there's still a fundamental gap between the theoretical prediction of a new quantum state of matter or phenomenon and its realization in a real, tangible quantum material. The University of Birmingham has an amazing legacy in this field of research. So one of the forefront areas at the moment is understanding the exotic properties that emerge in materials in the, in the two-dimensional limit. And a lot of this research is inspired by early theoretical developments on the predictions of new orders and phase transitions that can emerge in two-dimensional materials. This was work that was completed by Nobel laureates Kostelitz and Thaulis during their time at the School of Physics and Astronomy here at the University of Birmingham in the early 1970s. Now, my research group in the School of Chemistry is taking a more experimental approach, which is very much inspired by theory. And we are aiming to use our expertise as, as materials chemists to think about how we can combine key chemical and structural components of quantum materials to give rise to new quantum states of matter. A key target for us in our current research is the identification of a quantum spin liquid. So quantum spin liquids are widely regarded as a kind of holy grail for quantum materials research. Unlike conventional magnetic materials that we're kind of used to studying, for example, ferromagnets that we use in a whole range of applications from simple fridge magnets to non-volatile data storage and computer hard disk drives, these conventional magnetic materials are defined by the presence of long range order of their constituent atomic magnetic moments. The quantum spin liquid is very different from this because its constituent magnetic moments remain disordered at any temperature or energy scale. But they're not isolated from one another, they're intricately connected to one another through the phenomenon of quantum entanglement. And this is one of the key reasons why quantum spin liquids are so highly sought in quantum materials research, because this is, of course, one of the key quantum mechanical phenomena that we want to exploit in next generation technologies, such as quantum computing and communication. One of the key roadblocks in the field so far has been the relatively narrow pool of materials available as candidates for quantum states of matter, like the quantum spin liquid. We essentially widened that pool of candidate materials by showing for the first time that the complex magnetic interactions required to engineer quantum spin liquids are stable and can survive in more open, hybrid, inorganic, organic framework. And so we hope that through this research, we can lead the field in exploring alternative materials classes as key candidates for, for quantum materials. The particular quantum spin liquid state that we were looking for in this research is known as the Kitayev quantum spin liquid. And this has some particularly stringent kind of materials requirements for its realization. We're looking for two-dimensional materials that adopt a kind of honeycomb network of magnetic moments. And key to the interactions that we need to engineer in this state is that we need a kind of um, anisotropy of the interactions. And this, in terms of prediction by theory, is thought to come about by dressing that honeycomb network with heavier transition metal ions. 
where the enhanced spin orbit coupling interaction is key to engineering the kind of bond dependence of the anisotropic exchange interactions that we're looking for. So I would say that this is still very new. It's a very new piece of research and so I think the longer term impact remains to be seen. But I really do hope that this demonstrates that alternative materials classes are viable and fruitful areas of study to, to try and uncover new quantum states of matter. The complexity of the materials and the phenomena that we're trying to uncover uh, really mean that partnerships and collaborations are essential. No one person can achieve everything that we want to do alone by themselves. And since coming to the University of Birmingham, I've been really supported in terms of developing my research leadership in, in new, building new partnerships. A key example of this for our research as a group was that in 2022, I established the Midlands Mag Lab through the support of the University of Birmingham as well as UK Research and Innovations Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, EPSERC. This is a new state-of-the-art magnetometry facility that allows us to probe the magnetic properties of quantum materials over a very wide range of uh, experimental conditions, low temperature, high temperature, applied fields and pressures. And this is really essential to us for understanding how to tune and control the properties of quantum materials. Last year we built on the success working with colleagues from the schools of physics and astronomy and metallurgy and materials, winning a second EPSERC Strategic Infrastructure Award. And through this we will de be developing a UK unique ultra low temperature NMR facility. This is going to enable us to probe the local magnetic properties of quantum materials at the very lowest temperatures. And this is key because it's in this temperature window that the unusual properties of, of quantum materials tend to manifest most strongly. External partnerships are also essential to my research program. In particular, in order to understand as much as we possibly can about the materials that we synthesize here at the University of Birmingham, we need to apply a range of advanced characterization techniques. And neutron scattering is really an unparalleled probe for understanding the properties of quantum materials. As a research group, we work very closely with international uh, central facilities for neutron scattering science. In particular, the ISIS neutron and muon source, which is based down in, in Oxfordshire here in the UK. And you know, it's really, really exciting that through this new partnership, the University of Birmingham will be playing a key role in supporting the international uh, quantum materials research community. My main goal at the moment for the future is to develop the synthesis science of quantum materials. At the moment, the synthesis methods that are widely used are actually very poorly understood. And a consequence of this is a lack of reproducibility in the field of quantum materials research. The synthesis methods that we use can introduce defects and disorder which can easily vary from sample to sample. This really hinders progress in the field. Ultimately, we need to go beyond simply understanding structure property relationships to understanding synthesis structure property relationships. This will enable us to overcome that fundamental gap between theory and experiment, prediction and realization. And ultimately, we need these reliable, reproducible synthesis pathways for quantum materials to build and secure that pipeline to next generation quantum technologies.